that I was dead. I was like six percent, six, <laughs> and everybody else is thirty. Yeah, Lamar Jackson does not play quarterback. He's a running back yeah. that throws the football. That, that caught me by surprise. Six percent is real low. Wild. That's like big three formation. That's almost less than Wildcat. Like, <laughs> that's like you down at the end of the game and you basically called. Basically, I think they that's said it was. What was it? Sixty snaps all year. Think about that. That's real low. I mean, That's it's like a bad. little bit they, over they two have, games. They've had a winning record two straight years. Yeah, he's elite. He's elite, but it's the playoffs that kill him. You know, you play yeah. a good team, a team that's ready for that. They just might get you. Well, if you're trying to tune in now and you just bought us here, it's your weekly update because that was basically it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Those 30 seconds. But regardless, episode 2 0, big 2 0. Is it back? 20. No, that's perfect. You can see that's, that's like perfect. English, like literature, <laughs> perfect text. Zero, gotcha. Episode 20, D Rod and Shaniac Sports Pod. Thank you guys for tuning in 20 times. We made 20 it to different 20. times. And usually, you know, like every 10 episodes will give you like a little fun one, but you know, there's a lot of news, regular sports news happening, especially this week. You still got NBA mm-hmm. playoff stuff. It, it's It's too important to pass up. Especially this week's because a very specific and important team was bounced. Got the boot. Booted. I couldn't believe it. Prominently yesterday. I couldn't believe it. I'll uh, I'll just get ready to make the transition soon. But you know, yeah, <laughs> catch the background just just for when we're ready. Um, let's real quickly though. Let's talk in the beginning. Um, just real quick, the teams that have moved on into round two. It's really just four teams in the East that, you know, one we'll get to, but uh, number five seed Atlanta will play one seed Philly. And as long as Embiid comes back from, he's like a slightly torn meniscus, could miss like the mm-hmm. first game, maybe at best. Um, if Embiid comes back healthy, I think, I, I think that series can be, uh, it'll go Philly's way. I, I think just generally. If they watch the Atlanta, match. if they watch Atlanta game one, they're going to keep him out game two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like no, they no, keep no. him out until they lose. And if especially if Embiid doesn't play because they, they gave No, I'm Washington saying I feel like they keep Embiid out Embiid. until they lose. Because I feel like he's gonna sit out game one just I mean, to, just yeah. so they can see what happens. That's the waters. If, right, 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 right. If Seth Curry goes crazy, Embiid, yeah, take your time. We got we got this. You can heal that meniscus. Get some surgery even if you need to. No, no, no. You no, don't no, want no, that. Not that much time. Not that much time. <laughs> because right after that, you know, if they do take that series, then um you got to take either Milwaukee or Brooklyn, and yeah, and that's, neither either of those teams. Gonna <laughs> you're not going to want to miss out of those, yeah, yeah, especially without Embiid. Um, that's a tougher series, especially in the East. Um, Milwaukee, I think this is going to be the toughest game of the next round because all season these two teams have been at each other's necks, and you know the Nets have faced those hardships where oh, you know we got one or two guys out, uh, and by guys I mean the three superstars that they got on their team. And, you know, their bench has stepped up big in those games. Um, specifically, you know, Jeff Green has had a couple 20-point games against the Bucs. Uh, Joe Harris shown up. Um, it's really led by either Kyrie or Harden whenever those two guys were in or playing. KD came in, I think, the third game, right? Here's the Definitely thing. Back-to-back no, games, I'm pretty sure. Third I think and four, second K- and third. KD, KD played in all three games against the oh, okay. Bucs. Okay. I don't but remember how Harden missed first the first last yeah. two, yeah. and Kyrie missed the third. first one. Yeah. So that's where it gets kind of tricky because people are like, right. oh, they won two out of three. And it's like. It's been a mix and really... match of, you know, plug <laughs> and play really... almost. <laughs> it's, it's tough to say because, you know, like the Bucks are one of those teams that you can kind of count out, right? Like the last two, three years, they've been a top team in the East. They've been dominating the East, you could say, up until, you know, this season. The only difference is that, you know, you're coming against a super team and you're coming against potentially against a Philly team that is completely reinvigorated. If Embiid is able to come back healthy, a team that could potentially really give them trouble. Really. I think the hardest series they could potentially face is against Philly overall in, in, in any scenario, the bucks, because I mean, oh, yeah, they yeah. played Brooklyn three times and you know, they've gotten the mix and match of those three players this is still going to be the toughest 
series, I think, in the playoffs because it's actually happening teams. now. Yeah, if, because it's actually if happening. If the right Nets now. get past the Bucks, they're yeah. gonna beat the 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 Sixers. The Sixers. If the Bucks yeah. get past the Nets, they better beat the Sixers because you have That's no excuse. Gonna be, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you've you've taken down the Titan of the East. You have no excuse to lose to Philly. But then again, you look at what Milwaukee has done in the past, and they have choked in late games but in the conference. You have finals, to remember conference semis. Giannis was hurt. Giannis getting hurt is the major factor in those two games. Yeah, yes, both but years. He also lost one of those games when he was healthy. Last yeah. year against Miami, he lost the first game, and already it was like a step back because you know the one seed losing to this Miami's what three four seed last year. I think, I think they seed. were the four. I think we talked about this year four like last yeah. episode or whatever. Yeah, they were the four or the five. Yeah, I think Regar- they might yeah, have been Miami. The five Miami went. And, you know, right at the table, obviously, as we know, last season, the season before that, it was Kawhi. And you lose to Kawhi, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not. It, it's it's but, not, but I mean, th- th- that Kawhi was, was a lot different than what we've seen. That I was low bench with Kawhi. Yeah, fresh legs. Yeah. Um, that's the East. I mean, Milwaukee-Brooklyn is going to be my favorite series, obviously, because, you know, I hate Atlanta right now. Um, I do no, but like, that's why that should be your favorite series, because they have no, no. shot. Oh, what, what am I going to watch them for? I I, I expect he get Philly to I expect Philly he to won't be, be out there it. and dominating, <laughs> crushing them because they can't because they have exactly what the Knicks lacked against Atlanta, which was a whole ton of offense. You have offense at one through five, all your bench. I mean, those guys are elite defenders, almost you can say too. But more importantly, they can defend the three. It's going to be super important to defend Young, Harder. Bogey. I have something Collins. about that when we get to the Knicks. When we get to talk yeah. just Knicks, I have something about yeah, yeah. that. Carry, carry on. Carry on. Well, I mean, the next step, that's the East, is the West. And the only team that's moved on is Utah. They beat Memphis mm-hmm. last night, as expected. Uh, you know, shout out to John Morant and his family who really gave Utah their props because, you know, it's a tough series. Obviously, Donovan Mitchell is a dog, a beast, you know, it's whatever you want to call him. Nuts. Uh, absolute menace. Miss a month and a half and come back West. and just like nothing happened. And what me and Shay mentioned before is that the three remaining West Coast teams, that's Portland and both L.A. teams, Clippers and Lakers, are facing elimination. They're all down 3-2 going into game six tonight, uh, June 3rd. You've got Nuggets at Blazers. Dame is coming off possibly one of the best performances of his career. He's going 50 again. Uh, I expect him to drop maybe 60 this time because he knows he <laughs> no, has no, to no. literally carry. Game seven, carry. maybe 60. Tonight is going to be like 45, 50. Oh, no, dog. He's Bet he's on that. Y'all he betting, knows he has him. to carry this team because other his other options flaked, bailed on him last game, bailed on him in game five. The fault. man was on fire. He took all the, he he took all the clutch. Out of bounds. He took all the clutch and left it with nothing. You you can you place negative fifty percent blame on Dame Lillard. That's what you do in this situation because Dame literally looked like a basketball god on the court, a basketball god on the court two nights ago, and obviously Denver has you know their plate full of specifically Dame Lillard. That's that's yeah, pretty really. much Austin it's Rivers. Really. I wish you luck, bro. Just I, I yeah. I don't know who can guard that either. You you exactly yeah, right to question y'all that. Y'all would have loved to keep Austin Rivers now. I was gonna save that for the next thing because <laughs> but it's gonna be mentioned it. It's gonna be mentioned it now because he really fleeced us. He really yeah. made us believe that he was just a piece of trade value this season. Yeah. Just a piece. You know, and we got nothing in return for him. We got a late draft pick, a second round pick from him. Could turn into something, yeah, you know. And then, of course, the other game, the late game tonight, is Suns Lakers. Is AD coming back tonight? Because Bron told him not to rush it. Because Bron, I feel like Bron still thinks yeah. he's it's three years ago when he can carry a team by himself. I don't think he can do it by himself. Not against this team, unless Chris Paul's not. Not playing. against this. Team. If Chris Paul's I... out, then we could talk. I want to say Paul is in. I'm checking game cast now, only because. He's played the last four games, right? After that first No, game, but he, he re-aggravated. He didn't play like the whole second half. But it was also a blow. It was like a 30-point blowout by that time. Um, it says he's day-to-day, you know, whatever that means for Chris Paul. It's a closeout series. I think he'll start, but he probably won't finish if he, like, you know, 
desperately needs to rest it or so another, you know, blowout. AD is also listed as day-to-day. LeBron told him not to rush it. I think even with a hurt AD, if he comes back, I don't think this Lakers team's got it this game. I don't think they forced seven. I know LeBron they, is they, they really LeBron. could like LeBron has been unreal in, in closeout games. That's the problem. Look, I mean, that's elimination they, games. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we don't have to mention 2016 because we all witnessed it. Greatness. He's and unreal. Besides that fact, you know, there there are uh, he specifically is on pace to repeat this season from last season. And I mean, no, it's not the same team. I, it's it's going to be. That's a stretch, I, dude. It's that's a big stretch. I don't. LeBron's... I don't want to say. I don't want to say anything that you know, like, counts him out completely because you know you count out LeBron James. Next thing you know, he's got a sixty point triple double that wins by two because he hit a step back. Three. Yeah, but then in those games, you know, if like, he has to put up sixty, they're probably only the... winning by three. That's what and, I'm saying. He puts up a game-winning tied, two or three. And who's yeah. taking that last shot? He doesn't have a Kyrie right now. No. Oh. Dennis Schroeder? It's him. No, no, no. It's him. It Dennis Schroeder and KCP combined for zero points in the last game. Zero. How you combine yeah. two that's players? Great, you're two that's starting back. great backcourt right there. <laughs> you combine for zero Elite points. Elite And they both played like 30 minutes. That Lakers team decimated. I mean, I'm going to just – what I said before was that I'm not counting out LeBron – but I don't think this team, this, this Lakers team, is is gonna ha- is gonna be able to do it this year. Even if they win this series, they're not taking out the next series. They're not beating Utah next series. Who who would they play? No, they wouldn't play Utah. They would yeah, play. They're the lowest remaining seed. No, no, it's it's one, four, two, three. So whoever plays the Lakers are the the seven. So they they count as two if they get through this. So they'll play the three. So that's Nuggets, right? Nuggets, play Blazers. Nuggets are the Blazers. And if they play the Blazers, they're gonna be they're gonna win that series. Yeah, that would be the only scenario. I mean, realistically, I I still don't think they get through the Suns tonight. I think the Suns take it. No, I, I agree. I'm with you, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, you, I can't. I, also, what you said before, you can't count on LeBron. Like, yeah, he's he's just it, not. He's 35. It's hard to count out LeBron. I'm 36. I'm yeah, 36. Like you gotta remember that he's not he's not 30 year old LeBron. You know. He's not 2016 Bron that could pull from half and then at the same time run down the middle of the paint, quadruple teamed, and dunk. He's not doing that anymore. He could still get it off, but it's not going to be the same. He no. might roll his ankle on the way down. <laughs> he's getting there now. So yeah. those days, are, those days are kind of over. He's he's at that, that point age. now where you can't you you can expect him to still be great because he's still the best player in basketball, but mm-hmm. it's not clear. Like Mm -hmm. when LeBron was really the best player in basketball, he would lock you up, Mm -hmm. score 40 on you with a triple double and occasionally hit a buzzer beat on you all in the same game. And it's like, bro, yeah, you you look look at his time in Cleveland. His time in Cleveland was all that the the second time around the first time around too, but the second time around, he was nice when he wasn't shooting. No, no, no. The second time around, he realized I can't keep trying to dunk on people. I got to, I gotta pull it from the outside. He, he started doing that his F3. game. He look at the ball. Yeah, and then come and pull Step it. Back. When he started doing that, sick man. That Brun was a man on a mission. He's not sick doing that anymore. Man. Not not in, not in this late stage, but yeah, oh, no. yeah. And then the last game uh, tomorrow is another game six: Clippers, Mavs in Dallas. You're looking at another man on a mission. One of the baddest men in the NBA right now. Luka Doncic. It's not even fair. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it, bro. Because I watched like the first quarter and a half, like the first quarter and halfway to the second quarter, and it was just all Luka. Dribble, 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 step back, take a second, hit a three, then like step back. Oh, defense coming in, that's fine. Dribble around him. It takes his time too, because he's not like the fastest guy in the court. Takes his time to dribble around these, like all the Clippers defenders. And if he's not taking an easy lay-in over Zubak, then he's dishing it out to Bobby or he's yep. kicking out to, to Porzingis. And Tim Hardaway, you can't even count him out because he dropped another, what, like 20 last night? He's a, a good Lucas 42. second or third option. Yeah. I we'll feel like if you guys got him back. <laughs> we'll get to that because he's a free agent, I think, this season. Don't don't bring him back. Don't bring no, him back. That, that, don't, that was don't, show. Don't that's a, that's an all-time low for the Knicks. Not if that count him out. Why would that be? <laughs> 
You know what? <laughs> well, this is the, the perfect. Before we get there, no, it's Shane. It's the perfect segue because I think that's all the teams in the West. Because you go West, first. Right? Well, that's I, your I favorite go team. You I've go first. Talk next. I'm gonna let and you then go I first. I will back you up. Go ahead. Why would I have let you go first in our Knicks talk? No, because I, I'm level headed. You're you're probably very angry right now. I'm very level headed when it comes. to I'm level headed <laughs> about the Knicks. Go ahead. Go I ahead. knew what I the Knicks troubles this. were. Because as soon as we lost that first game at home in the Garden, I knew it was going to be a tough series. That regular season sweep was meaningless. And as much as I wanted to gas it up, and as much as, you know, like the Knicks were probably one of the best teams defensively and, you know, a decent team offensively this season, that type of play does not carry into the playoffs. Yes, defense wins championships. That's a cliche that you can say in every sport. But in basketball, you can play the top defense in the league and be the top defense in the league. But if you're not top 10, top five in offense, don't don't worry about championships. Don't worry about playoff time because you are going to face trouble. Trouble. That's that's my first level headed remark about the Knicks is that, listen, this was a great season. We were expected to be a 13 win team. Every projection had us as a team of the future. How can we move Julius Randle? How can he show out this season so that we can trade him for some major pieces later on, some first-round draft picks, some potential role guys down the stretch? R.J. Barrett, shout-out to him all season. In the playoffs, don't know where he went. Don't know where he went. All season, though, good job. I would count this as his real rookie year because last year, you know, you had the bubble and barely played you know he was like "Eh." and also he he, you know he had his his rookie slump the entire COVID bubble minus the bubble COVID year this was RJ's real you know minus 10 games rookie experience because he was playing on a team that one was a contender and two needed him to step up in big moments and when he did this team was a pleasure to watch I mean, like Julius Randle, yes, he can do a lot. He can't do it all. He can do it a lot. But, and I put this in a tweet, I think, yesterday uh, over Rob Rob Perez's um, Knicks therapy session, you know, let it all out that he does for all the the dejected and uh, bounced teams. We needed a second option this year so bad. And you cannot rely on young stars, young players, rookies to dish it all out when your star goes cold. Because, again, this is a team that is getting their first taste of real life like celebrity in the NBA. We were talked about all, the, all season by NBA teams, by media, by this, that, the third fans. Everybody was talking about the Knicks at one point. Brooklyn had all the media attention in New York, all of it from day zero, from the moment KD landed in, I assume he landed in JFK. It's pretty close to Brooklyn. I'm I'm not sure he's living out there in Brooklyn, but you know, rents are a little high for KD, I think. Um, What? He makes like a hundred million a year. He don't care. (laughs) It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Regardless, I mean, you know, this season to finish as a four seed, you know, Knicks fans, you really, really have to take this season with just like a grain of salt. This is a great season for us. Great season because we beat all the projections, which is already a good enough season. We made the playoffs, which is a great season already. If you're a playoff team, but not just the playoff team, a four seed. You finished in the top four. You had a great season this season. Now, what happened in the playoffs? We got iced by Trey Young. You got beat by a team that was faster. That's all I got to say. Just a faster team. Had a better offense and was just overall faster. New Orleans Noel getting hurt sucks. I think that would have changed maybe the pace of play and – just Atlanta's overall ability to get past the Knicks. I mean, our defense was, you know, okay, especially down like, you know, second, third quarter. 
But first quarter, you know, we started off slow. Offense was nowhere to be found. Julius Randle didn't find the, the basket until game five in the first quarter. And then, you know, come fourth quarter when you're down 10 or you need a big push, the only reason why I worked in game two, the game that we won in the garden, was that Atlanta went cold in the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter. They went cold in the beginning of the fourth quarter in the first game and in the third game at home. But by then, it was kind of too far gone for the Knicks. Now, you know, I won't sit here and break down every single game because, you know, we lost 4-1. Uh, it, was, it was a quick series, a light series for the Knicks. In the playoffs, I, I think they just didn't reflect our season at all. Um, our offense looked a lot worse. Our defense looked slow. Noticeably, Randall played, you know, worse defense. You can count it to, you know, momentum that Atlanta had all, all series. You can count it towards how fast they played. I don't know. But, um, you know, look towards the offseason. Obviously, we're looking for a big name. There's not too many big names this season unless, you know, you're looking at people who opt out. And even still, those aren't like the biggest names. I think it's like Kawhi and Chris Paul, who I don't think are even opting out after the season. They're Chris Paul's probably going to stick with him. Yeah, but he wants a, a larger contract. He's, I think, going to stay in Phoenix for, he wants like a three year, 100 mil looking yeah. for you know, superstar. Which is funny because um, he's making like basic 50 mil next year. He's making like so 44 like, if he takes that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, D Rose, I'd love to have him back if I could make like closing statements on it. D Rose, I'd like to have him back. I think he makes for a good six man. Um, Bullock, I think it's another one of our free agents, and Burks is another free agent. Uh, two guys who were big in that stretch of games that you know we won like nine in a row. Uh, look to be like big shooters this year. Uh, decent second options, scorers for Randall for an offense that you know didn't have much else. Uh, I'd like to see either of them back. Maybe one, not the other. I like Burks a little more. He, I think he provides an offensive edge that, you know, Bullock doesn't always have. Bullock plays a lot better defense. But, um, man, we are looking for offense. I think Emmanuel quickly can be a starter on this team in the near future. I'd like to see him start next year because he just provides, you know, electricity for that offense. The kid is a, a shooter. He's a scorer for sure. And I think Tibbs can mold him into a, a decent defender at least. Um, obviously, we don't want, you know, like Alfred, pra El Alfred, Alfred Payton back because, you know, that, that project didn't really work. Uh, and it proved at the end of the season, he played like seven minutes every game. Um, just, you know, keep building this team because, you know, it, it wasn't a lost season. It was literally a season that we can – reflect on this and say, you know, we are now a top team in the East and we can bully a lot of those, you know, other teams that are still fighting for, you know, aside from Philly, from Brooklyn, from Milwaukee, that's what is that? 11 other teams in the East that we can still bully. And we kind of did that this season. I think the Knicks next season could potentially see the same success. We have two top 10, two top, we have two one round one draft picks. Well, okay, two round one draft first picks. Round. Yeah. First, yeah, round one draft picks, and we are literally looking at a team that could next season continue this run of being a top defensive team, being a offensive firepower on the rise. Until then, though, I mean. Julius should get the max because we don't have any max players on our team. Why not? Like, you know, he's a guy we can build around. We're obviously looking for another guy that we need. None of these free agents deserve the max that I can see right now. But I like Randall. I think if he gets that second option. He can be just as deadly as he was in the regular season as he could be in the playoffs. But do not count this team out. As it always is, Trey Young is balding. <laughs> will forever remain a villain in the garden. And I think Atlanta and New York kind of have that kind of like, you know, starting building, you know, Kindle of, of a rivalry that could stretch for a, a next decade or so. 
But otherwise, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think, you know, Nick's great season. Right. Hats off to you. Literally hats off to you. But it's <laughs> Yankees baseball time. New York <laughs> baseball never ends. New York sports is always on the rise. And, you know, there's just something about New York sports, you know, in the playoffs that they kind of just break your heart one way or let, another. Let Go me, ahead, Nets fan. Go ahead. Reflect on you. us. All I learned from the Knicks – is that the regular season means absolutely zilch because the Hawks showed you the regular season to them was just conditioning. Play well enough to make the playoffs and turn it on in the playoffs Mm -hmm. because you guys dismantled them during the regular season. I wouldn't say it was blowout wins, but y'all showed them, like, we're going to beat you every time we play you, and we don't care. That's what did. it looked like in the yeah. regular season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the playoffs started, Trey Young said, give me the ball. The playoffs is for stars. Mm. The playoffs, you said it. The playoffs is not for number one defense. Of course, you need the, you need a great defense to win a you chip. Do I don't care yeah. what anybody says. You yeah, need yeah. a great defense to win a chip. But yeah. the playoffs is not about defense. The playoffs is for mm-hmm. stars. The Knicks don't have a star. The Knicks have very good players. The Knicks don't have a star. Maybe after this, this offseason, Julius Randle can turn into a star. But all I learned is that, one, Tom Thibodeau trusts nobody. <laughs> he does not trust anybody. Because why is Derrick Rose playing 38 minutes a game? Does not make sense. Why is Nilakina, after sitting for three hours, coming in with a 30 seconds left in the game to guard Trey Young? You think you think you think uh Nilakina is loose? You think his legs are ready to guard a shifty Trey Young? No. But uh, he had to he play him be. because he should be. No, 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 no. You said if you don't play all game, should not be ready. Of course, That's of course, of course. You gotta loosen up. That first couple you're minutes the, of the game. You're the best defending guard on the team. Yes, when you play. You're he's no, not in the rhythm the, of the game. He's watching the game, uh, watching I the know, game, watching the game, I coming know. in crunch time and guard Listen, one of the shiftiest that, players in that the NBA. That specific play was very, very unique in the fact that Taj Gibson and Nilakina both tried to guard Young on the same side, on the right side. And when they he, mashed together. It happened more than once, Nilakina, I'm trying to tell you. It happened. It, that the was one, the, the first one, one. The first time it yeah, happened, I give you game. that. Yeah, because that was bad. But I think it happened yeah. in game game three. Three. Yeah. Trey Young just walked right past him, and it's like, if he played, I know he's not good offensively, but if he even played three minutes in the third quarter, just mm-hmm. to get in game motion, get yourself mm-hmm. moving, and then you come in at the end of the game. Yes, mm-hmm. he played like. 40 seconds the entire it felt like the entire first round series and Mm -hmm. all 40 of those seconds were fourth quarter under two minutes with the game within three points four points and you wanted to guard Mm -hmm. him trey young who was getting to the the basket at will every game okay let's move on let's move on i I would actually agree with you on that end on the offensive end the same thing with quickly quickly paid i think a total of eight minutes in what sense does that make the whole series? You guys were begging for offense, and, and every time hot. he comes in the game, he makes a three, makes a yeah. layup, hits that stupid floor that he does every time. He makes it every single time. What happens? Back I, I on the tell bench. you though, I tell you though, that did kind of infuriate me. After game three, I noticed the pattern because it was D Rose playing 36, 37, 38 minutes a game, and I, you know. Tibbs does not trust anybody. Peyton, Peyton started the first two, and that was a me- that was useless. But useless that shows you Peyton. because he I was know. bad the last month yeah. of the season, but yet he started every game. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, he started yeah. every game, and then playoff time, you start him the first two games of the se- the postseason, and then only play him six minutes, and then you put him on the bench. Derrick Rose, come on, let's go. And it's like, yeah. bro, Derrick Rose. Is an old like he might not be old he's in age, old, no, no, but his knees have man. gone through so much. Derrick Rose, he old, is man. An old man, I, I literally thought well, after the much. game, after this, after the series ended, I literally thought he was gonna go to the presser and say, I'm retiring after this, bro. Because he literally, he during literally I thought he was gonna retire at halftime. Yeah, I tweeted it out. He, he made a layup, him. Yeah. he made a layup 
and you know when you make a layup and you turn around to run back up to play defense, yeah, he, he looked the in the floor. camera. He didn't do it on purpose. He looked in the camera. His face was like this. Dude, I'm like, was it's on, the first quarter. This dude, dude is dead. <laughs> dude was on the floor for a long. He was. He needed like a couple minutes to recover and get back up before he could run back down on defense. I'm I like, knew it's the from first game two, quarter, game three. I was this like, dude is gassed. Tibbs I is said, this burning man. this dude. If we even make it out of this first round series, you have no don't shot bother playing him. Don't bother playing no Rose the, the first two None. games because he needs like a week's rest. At so least. Then, yeah, you're right. You're so right, then you're we going. get to so then we get to the next the next one. Okay. Yeah. You have Julius Randle, who yes, he led you guys to the four seed, but he has never been the focus of anybody's attention ever in his career on the Lakers. There was Kobe. And then when Kobe was hurt, they had um, D'Angelo Russell who took most of the shots. Right. And Jordan then he goes Clarkson, to the, yeah. And it was a team of just like rookies. A rookies. Like a, a and then you, rookies. then he goes, he's the oldest one. He was, he's been yeah. in the league since 2015, I think, but yeah. D D'Lo took all the shots and yeah. then he goes to, New Orleans, the Pelicans, and who plays there? AD. AD. And then for a stretch, DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> you think you think Julius Randle is taking any shots? None. He would have great games like here and there that showed promise. That's why the Knicks even went after. But he was mm-hmm. never that guy where you could look at like, oh, he's going to lead this team. Then you get he, to this He never year, right? has been. Yeah, okay. Yeah, get, go, 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 go. So go, you go. get to this, this year. Season. Yeah. And Tom Thibodeau almost made it clear coming into the year. Everybody's going to have to prove themselves because I don't think anybody on this team is elite. He basically said he didn't say it clear, but he basically said that. And the only two people that showed up, not that's not a rookie. So, you know, quickly showed up, stuff like that. Yeah. RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. Julius Randle single-handedly got you guys to the playoffs yes no single handed that's obvious that's obvious yes like yes. and it, it got even more obvious in the playoffs because mm-hmm. the second he went cold the whole like team south. froze it didn't even yeah. get cold froze everybody like was south. bad yeah and it's like he's getting double teamed but i said i said i said on the last episode he's double teamed he kicks to reggie bullock wide open i mean 10 feet of space between him and the, and the closest defender. Brick. Then the next time, does it again. Alec Burks. Brick. Then the mm. next time, he kicks it to Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose not really going to shoot that three. So Derrick Rose going to drive back in, kick it back out to Julius Randle. Julius mm-hmm. Randle never makes up his mind. He mm-hmm. go, He picks Especially up Especially in this series. He takes the ball, head fake, jab step. Dribble, 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 step out. back. Bad shot. And it's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. So all I really yeah. learned from from this series is that one, the most important thing, y'all need a point guard badly mm-hmm. because Derrick Rose would be like you said he would be mm-hmm. the a great six man. Yeah, y'all need a point guard badly. Two, Tibbs needs to trust people because the reason why y'all were the four seed is because he only played like eight people a game. If you think about it, he only plays eight people. Y'all have 15 people on the bench, 12 get dressed every game. He only played eight people a game. That means there's mm-hmm. four people that never saw the game. More, but yeah. Kevin Knox, Nilakina, of course, them two never played. And then yeah. you have Theo Pinson, well, mostly guards. Theo P- but Theo Pinson, Theo Pinson is a G League combo guy but they call them up for because energy. they're figuring oh okay yeah we need like more space on the bench why don't you come like the knicks did not have the depth that their oh, but every bench every team really has reflected. the theo pinson no 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 the but lakers have jared listen, dudley you know you understand i know i know no no but the but here's the difference is that the knicks bench was scoring 50 percent of their points every game yeah so you clearly had names on their bench it's just that there were the same three, four people no, coming no, no, no. every time. No, no, no. They score fifty yes, percent of the points because their start your starting five is a defensive starting five. RJ Barrett's not a scorer yet. He can get there. It's really just Julius Randle. Alfred Payton's not a scorer. No. 
Taj Gibson is not a scorer. Oh, no, no, no. Evans no, no. is not a scorer. No, so, Mitch Robinson is not Robinson. a scorer. You understand? Yes, he is. No, no. Mitch Robinson is he, is a scorer. He's a scorer he of those can centers. can score. He's, he's not a scorer. A scorer. He's defenders. not there to drop 20 a game. He's there to lock up the paint. I don't know. So know. that's the issue. He that's why the bench scored 50% of the thing. points because quickly we come in the game and drop a, a smooth 15 quick and then go sit mm-hmm. down. And then Derrick Rose will come in the game, drop 20, go sit down. And then, so that's already 35 points. That's already Which, a know. third of the points. Which on paper is not efficient. Like in any form of the game at all, is not efficient. Your you bench can't have should your never bench. score 50% of your points, no. ever. No, 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 no. That means no, no, no. start, your, your starting five is bad. Yeah. The only I mean, bench that should ever yeah. score fifty percent of the points is a team that their starters are hurt. So, like, let's say the Jazz when Donovan Mitchell went down, you know Jordan Clarkson. Well, Jordan Clarkson moves into the starting rotation. Uh, no, Bogdanovich moves into the starting rotation. So you know you have Jordan Clarkson off the bench. He's gonna play like fifty minutes, like. You know he's gonna play a ton of minutes. You have Joe Ingles who's gonna play a ton of minutes because there's less, there's more room on the in the rotation now. Mm. So the issue is the Knicks. Let me not say the Knicks. Tom Thibodeau failed to give anybody confidence. The only people he gave confidence, Derrick Rose by playing him 40 minutes in the playoffs every game, Julius Randle, and RJ Barrett, and then Alec Burks for a stretch. That first game, or Alec Burks dropped like 20. I think you, you guys still lost, but he dropped like 20. The second game, he dropped like 20. I think he dropped 20 again or something like that. It, was, it the, might not have been 20, game, but it was close. It, uh, yeah, it was, it was like there was double digits, but it wasn't 20. But yeah, in the second and game. And then the, after that, what, what happened to him? Reggie yeah. Bullock got all the minutes. And it's like, yeah. yes, I know you want defense on the on the court, but you have to score to win. And if Julius Randle is going to brick even wide open layups, somebody else has to score. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. the issue. Tom Thibodeau literally said, I don't trust anybody, so I'm going to play mm-hmm. seven people. Taj Gibson should not be playing that many minutes. Yes, he's good. He was the last guy. Nerlens Noel is still better. If Nerlens Noel got hurt. hurt, that's the only reason yeah. why he didn't play he as much. But yeah. Taj Gibson he was played a clear, so much. Yeah. If, if Noel plays, there's there's a clear gap in, in the Knicks' overall defense against Atlanta down the stretch. They don't lose by double digits. They lose probably by eight points, four or five points. If it's me, mm-hmm. I start Julius Randle at the five. I know it's, it's you said it last it's week. It's not. Yeah. You said it's it not. Week. It's not a reliable thing for the whole playoffs. But in this current series, you think Clint Capella can stay in front of Julius Randle? Yes, because Julius Randle played zero defense in the last three games. No, I'm series. saying Julie. I'm saying Julius Randle with the ball in his hand. You think Clint Capella can guard him one on one? No, they're gonna have to double him. So that means you're leaving four shooters open because that means Alec Burks is, moves into the starting rotation. Is that what we saw this series though? Because this series, Julius Randle was cold. Clint Capella but he was never could guarded. Easily let him. He was Clint never Capella guarded by Clint Capella. Easily, I know, I know, but Clint Capella could have easily given him space and just let him shoot because that's he, the problem. Making. He made all of his mistakes double teamed. That's what I'm saying. In the, Put him at the yeah. five. Down, down Clint, the road. Clint, yeah. come here. You think you, you, think the, you can talk and wag your finger? Yeah. Like Matumbo, come guard no, me. Come see the, me one-on-one. I, I want to give him a little bit of props. Shout out to Clint Capella because I think he he really shocked most of the league. I mean, we knew in Houston he was a, a, a good like defensive rebounding like center. But because James Harden was there, there was no idea or – or perspective of what this guy was going to become. He was just a young guy who was going to clean up the boards for James Harden in Houston. He moves to Atlanta, and this regular season, he played okay. Like you said, it was just a test to test out the waters and see what you can do before you make the playoffs. He made the playoffs and is on a team that completely reignites him as a defender, not only as a defender, but as an offensive menace. Because in the paint, catching... Little lobs from Trey Young, uh, dishing in from like layups and then like, you know, dishing back out of the paint. He comes in, slam dunk, two handed dunk, lazy, little easy layup down the side over Taj Gibson, over Noel. Like it was going, he was going crazy this series. I don't think he'll do it next series though. Uh, he's going to have Embiid at probably on him or Dwight Howard. And that's if it's Embiid on him, him, he has more of a shot because Embiid's on the bum knee. So he's not yeah. going to be as mobile. But yeah. here's, here's my thing. In yeah. order for the Knicks to be as good as they were this year, mm-hmm. you need 
a star. Guard. It doesn't even need to be a point guard because if you I have, a, I would love a star point guard, but a star regardless. You're that's right. gonna be hard because star point guards don't really aren't really available like that, unless you get Westbrook, and that's not gonna win you a chip. That's just gonna put you guys back at the four seed again. So, I would say, uh, I don't see us passing the four seed next year, regardless, considering we still got Philly, Milwaukee, and Brooklyn. No, yeah, but that's us. the thing. If you get Dame, let's say you get Dame, you guys could be a three seed. It'll be hard. not beating the Nets, but it'll, it'll who be knows hard. If the Bucks will still be there, who knows if the Sixers will still be there? Y'all could easily get a three seed. The issue is, you guys need a it'll star be score. Yeah. Julius Randle should not be so, the number one option on anybody's team. Anybody, I don't care. He got y'all the four seed, but player, I told you he got you the four seed because no seat, one yeah. cares about the regular season. Y'all played harder than everybody else. You guys saw how the Nets I, turned I on know. defensively. Shot I don't me. know. How, I don't know if nobody cares about the regular season. No like, I, no, I wouldn't say Only that. Only French as teams. Much. Only French teams cares about care about the, the the regular season, like you guys, because you guys had to you shock look, the world. Look at. I think a prime example of a counter example to that is just the West. The East is tough to say because you know the East the chips fall as they may. You know, like you win an X amount of games. You win over 35 games in the East, 72 game season, 82 game season, regardless, you're probably making a playoff. And in this case, you're making a play in. In the West, you're fighting for your life every game. And I think that's maybe the only scenario where is, you know, like. But even then. The regular season will specifically count towards you. Yes, for the Knicks and maybe the East, the regular season is is a test. Yes. And Atlanta tested us in the regular season for the playoffs and we failed, but you know, I, realistically, I don't think anybody cares about the regular season, bro. Realistically, I, I think teams kind of ha- in, in the East, you can say maybe less because you know, you have three powerhouse teams and as long as you have a winning record, you're probably gonna make the playoffs. That may change considering, you know, how the NBA shakes up in the off season. This off season was a huge shakeup for the NBA. Obviously this off season with the amount of teams that have moved up and down, you may see a lot of stars leaving those lower ranked teams, those first round bouncers. Never know. You never know. Jay, uh, do you, Get you Westbrook this? and Beal. Figure out a way to sign both of them. Both of them. We'll try. Make Julius Randle your third option. Put we'll RJ Barrett uh, at the three. We'll figure out how to force uh, 85 games next year. Hawaii. To just no, you know, you're not getting Kawhi. To, Kawhi's not going. Just, we'll just force so. him. We'll force him. Well, no, there's zero percent chance Kawhi when goes we, to your. Well, obviously, in your scenario, when we force and be well, uh, uh, Russell Westbrook and Beal to New York, he They're won't both be by agents. himself. Sign both of them. We're not signing both of them. <laughs> you never That's, know. They like playing with each other. Yeah, they do, but they're not coming to New York like that. Yeah, I, have the, I think, have hold on, room. Westbrook, Westbrook has an opt out, I think, and Bradley Beal has an opt out. They both have to opt out. They, they're gonna opt out. You said beat Bill yesterday. They out. said, what, "How do you feel about playing in Washington?" He kept his mouth shut. He's like, "Eh." I mean, if you look at the way they started the season versus how they ended the season, it's tough. I'm Let's gonna read on, you though. I, I wanted to read on. you a couple names. Go ahead. Go ahead. Point go ahead. guard specifically of who you think the Knicks maybe should go after. These are free agents, not opt outs. Mike Conley, Kyle Lowry. Lonzo Ball, Goran Dragic. I think he's an opt out. No club opt. Uh, I would say, oh, oh, Liz Cambage. You cannot be that clumsy. I'm sorry. I'm watching the the the, watching the Liberty the game. Liberty game. She she basically got put in the mix just now. <laughs> but well, they um, playing the Aces, right? They, yeah. Yeah. So, Shout out Liz um, if I had to choose. Of, the, of those, those four guys. names, yeah, I you have to go with Conley, but because Conley's what 30, 32? 33. so he's really technically the youngest other than Lonzo, but Lonzo's not that good yeah. yet. So and if Lonzo Knicks, can improve his three heavy. point, Knicks fans are heavy on on Lonzo because he's young and Lonzo can he has improved his three point shot a lot. If he can yeah. continue to improve. Pick him up now because that's exactly the point guard that Thibodeau wants. He wants the ball handler, elite handles. Well, let me not say elite, very good handles, mm-hmm. elite defense. Lonzo will lock anybody. And then on top of that, he can shoot. 
Mm-hmm. But the issue is, once again, y'all don't need just a point guard that that could manage the floor. You guys need, need a, a star, actual star. Which I think free agent wise, there are none. It's Kyle unless Lowry. they opt out. We, uh, but Kyle Lowry is not at that level just, to take you, you just over the pick, top. Yeah, you just picked Lonzo Ball over Kyle Lowry as a point guard to look for. Because you can have Lowry. him for years. Kyle Lowry is going to play two years and be out. He's going to play, play two years. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I'll tell you two other ones that potentially strike some 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 noise. Dennis Schroeder, Schroeder, no, Schroeder. You saw you saw what he just did. I mean, yes, but we need a point guard. But yeah, yeah, I need a number we one. We need option. a starting point guard. We do need a score. He can be your starting point guard if he you can, get He can why, be a like score, but yeah, in, in the regular season, he's more of a factor than clearly the postseason. And then he has to opt out, and I know you don't want to hear it, Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't want to hear it, but <laughs> that makes way more sense. Yeah. Because where is he playing next year? Unless he plays the three or he's willing to be the sixth man. He's not gonna play. He's, he's gonna play a lot, but he's never gonna score. And he wants no. to dominate. Spencer Dinwiddie is six six. Mm-hmm. Him and Lonzo the same height. They're elite. Lonzo They're up six, there. Six. Lonzo six six, maybe six five, but I think he's six six. So if yeah. you think about it, you guys, if you get Dinwiddie, he's not a star, but he can definitely take you guys to the next level where you he's guys are looked at coming in as the fourth yeah. seed and not. A team that could maybe be the four seed. No, he's you definitely an option as the four seed. With, with definitely Dinwiddie. an option. If if he if he opts out, he's definitely one of the top options. I think for us to go after. If not, maybe I'll say Lonzo. Yeah, that's that's about it. That's really about it in terms of guards. The Knicks need a guard, but that's about it. You you want to talk Nets real quick? Nets move forward. I'm gonna talk Nets because. I'm tired of people. I'm not even going to talk about the series. I'm not even going to talk about the series because yeah, yeah, we should have swept them, but we didn't. Gentlemen sweep, you know, we Tatum scored 50. Of course, you don't score 50 and and lose unless you're Bradley Beal Mm -hmm. or Dame Lillard. Everybody else, you score 50, you win the game. But here's what I'm going to say. All these fans chanting, we want Brooklyn, (laughs) please reevaluate before you start doing that because Knicks did that game too where y'all got that win did not see a W for the rest of the series the Sixers did that y'all are number one seed and you're worried about us not a number one seed that's a bad sign that's a bad look that's a bad look number one seed chant we want Brooklyn after beating the Wizards y'all beat the Wizards like, let's reevaluate. You beat it's the Wizards. Calm down. That's horrible that they're the one seed and they're calling up. We want come. Brooklyn. We want the two seed. We want it. Not that they should come to us and fight for it, but we want to play you. I, we are asking permission when I heard, to play. When I heard that, bro, I was like, one, I said, one, please learn because the Knicks did that. Like, three days ago and did not see a W again. Don't get ahead of yourself. Mm-mm. Play the team you're playing. You have the Mm-mm. Hawks coming up next. You start chanting, we want Brooklyn again, and they might do the same thing they did to the Knicks. Calm down. Calm down. Play the team in front of you. Tie the teams doing that. We want Brooklyn. Did y'all see how Katie was playing defense? Let's not act like the Nets are bad defensively now. KD stepped it. KD said, I'll, "Give me Jason Tatum." Granted, he still yes, dropped thirty, sir. but it wasn't fifty. No, sir, and it was a pretty bad and blowout in that KD last game. KD was blocking everything. So please, word to the fans: tell your team and tell your buddies that are rooting for the same teams as you guys. Calm down because Don't people have been getting real humbled this postseason. Lakers Don't fans were talking it. about knocking out the Clippers. Lakers can't even beat the Suns. Please, please worry about the team in front of you because teams have been getting embarrassed. Donovan, the, the, the Grizzlies 
after they won game one, they was out here puffed up. Like, we about to do this. Donovan Mitchell came back on a bum ankle. And y'all didn't, they did not see, they didn't even see a lead for the rest of the series. Play the team in front of you, please. That is a very, very, very strong warning. Because if KD is playing defense like he was playing defense, GG's to the rest of the NBA. Worry about the team in front of you. How dare you be the one seed talking about we want Brooklyn? Y'all the one That's, seed. I you know, I hope you clip this and put it on Twitter because I, I feel like you know people need to see this and know. It's like, an you're epidemic. the one seed, and you're worried about us, the two, the two seeds. And that's bro. <laughs> Philly wallet. fans, Sixers fans, do better. Do better. Do better. Hold your, hold a higher standard for your guys. I mean, geez, you're Man, calling like two seed to come, come after us. You should be asked. You should be telling them to bend the knee. <laughs> beg, exactly. beg to come play us. You got home it field advantage. Sense. They gotta go through you. It makes sense that the Knicks fans would say because it's a battle for New York. Like, yes, the Nets will never be the kings of New York. Never. Because the Knicks have 60 years of it's being a team town. in New York. So it, it would Knicks never town. be a Nets town. But Nets have New Jersey still, and that's that's a lot of people. But, yeah. Let's, let's, let's remember. Let's remember that in order to win – you have to go through the one seed. The one seed doesn't have to come through us. So for them to be like, it makes sense that the Knicks did it because like I said, y'all the Kings of New York. So of course you're going to say, we want Brooklyn. Since Brooklyn wants to talk mess. Of course we don't talk mess. Cause y'all, y'all couldn't beat us. How else are you going to approach a super team like that? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Man. Julius uh, Randle yeah. is showed up this year, but Julius Randle cannot beat the Nets by himself. He couldn't even beat the Hawks by himself. And if the Nets played the Hawks, we would have swept them. So, that's my whole thing. Play the team in front of you. That is my the Nets aren't bounced yet. I hope they never get bounced. So I'm I'm not giving my end of year, oh, end no, no, of no. year recap. That, no, that's, that's not what this was. Yeah, yeah, this was you guys are moving I'm just forward telling the world on to the next one. That we are not the one seed. Mm-hmm. So the for the Sixers to be like, we want Brooklyn. You guys should be embarrassed you because should. especially if Embiid is out, even if he's not out, if he's like 80%, we're going to wash you guys. Wash, not just beat you guys, utterly dismantle you guys. The Bucks are a better matchup against us than, this, than this, the Sixers. So if we get past the Bucks and Embiid is still hobbled with a slightly torn meniscus, GG's. I don't care. Ben Simmons can go for 80 G G's. So let's, let's, let's calm this down. People talking 40 about layups. Like He's going to hit 40 layups. <laughs> <or his 80 laughs> <points. laughs> 40 layups. 35 layups, five free throws. Because the Hawks aren't getting past the Sixers because oh no, all they're going to do is put Ben Simmons on Trey Young. And I want Trey Young to try and do what he was doing against y'all against a 6'10 point guard. It's not happening. You're going to see ice a six ten point guard that was in the running for defensive play of the year. That's you're going to see ice tray for real. Ice He's going to be exactly. iced. <laughs> He's going to be actually on the you. bench doing this for himself. <laughs> so you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Nets, uh, I said the Nets need to just put their foot in the neck of Boston. Other than game four, they did. They, they utterly won. dismantled them the rest of the series. Game No, we lost game three or game four. Four, 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 four. You were up, we were up 3-0. 3-0. Yeah. I thought we were up 2-0, and then we won. We lost. You were regardless, up. regardless. Listen, you lost one game. You watched this Yeah, we regardless. lost one game. And I said, we put your foot in the neck. Granted, it helped Kemba was out, but we put a foot in the neck, and here we are. In order to beat in order to beat the Bucks, It was 2-1. Claxton. It was after the second game. Game three, they won. Then, yeah, so you're game right. okay. three, Yeah, so in order yeah. to beat Claxton, and in order to beat the Bucks, Claxton has to play. Mm-hmm. Um, DeAndre Jordan, you've been sitting for two weeks, two and a half weeks. It's going to be three weeks you've been sitting by the time it comes to game He's one. He's fresh. You better be fresh. legs better be, I mean, peachy. 
Lob City Wait, DeAndre needs to make La- <laughs> he needs exactly. to make a comeback. I mean, you, you already got, got the other piece. You got off. Blake. Three weeks <laughs> off. So when that series starts, sit on Giannis. Don't bite on any of his pump fakes. And let's see what happens. If that works, because Drew Holiday is going to stop either James Harden or Kyrie Irving. He can't stop both. And DiVincenzo's out. So, P.J. Tucker can't guard everybody. Chris Middleton's not good defensively. He's there to drop 25-30. So, one of the two guards is going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. KD is going to have P.J. Tucker on him. Barbecue chicken <laughs> for KD. For everybody else in the league, He's a matchup problem. KD's 6'11 with a 7'5 wingspan that shoots above his head. GG's. So Said it well, I feel Shane. like Put if, it well. if DeAndre Jordan, Nicholas Claxton, and Blake Griffin can stand up to Giannis, you don't have to stop him. You're not going to stop Giannis. Two-time defending MVP. Two-time defending defensive player of the year. He's elite. You just have to slow him down. Brooklyn, if we yeah. could do that, then I want Brooklyn fans to say, we want, what, Philly? That's not even sound good. It doesn't sound good. That's I don't what even I think want. they'll say that. They won't even they won't, say that. Because we know better. We're all you know scarred. Uh, there's not There's not one single Nets fan that's uber, uber on confident right one. now. Nobody. We're going to play on to the next one. Uh, there is not time. one single Nets fan that's out here like uh, we win in the chip for sure. No, no, no. Yeah, we feel good. We feel like we can do anything. You should feel but good. No yeah. one is dumb enough to scream we win in the chip this year. No. It takes it's a process. It's so a you get what I'm saying. There. Knicks fans, I get it. I still think it was dumb because it was the series was one one. Y'all lost game one at home. You won game two at, at home. I get it. And then you gonna chant we want Brooklyn. First, wasn't first playoff win since 2013 at home. I mean, wasn't I, very. We, we're riding a real high. They're probably gonna put a banner up for it, like they do <laughs> for every other win we get. Um, but it makes more sense yeah. that that happened. Sixers fans do better. Genuinely do better because y'all look dumb. And when if y'all lose even one single game to the Hawks. I'm clowning Sixers. I don't care if y'all win the whole finals. I'm clowning the Sixers for the rest. Because y'all looking at us and y'all yeah. losing to the Hawks. I'm clowning y'all for the rest of eternity. You know what you know they're going to say in Philly? What? It's real quiet in here. Yeah. It's real <laughs> quiet in here. Exactly. Yeah, bro. Oh, man. Well, that's all I had to say. No, no, no. KD, you, you I need you to points. go off. James Harden, do what you're doing. Drop your 34-point triple doubles. Kyrie, I don't care if you score three points a game. Just make the Bucks scared. Mm-hmm. And that's all you gotta do. And we we mm-hmm. we cook them with grease. So let's move on. Yankees, let's do it. Yankees recap. Um, we are in the first like three days of June or whatever. So we're just gonna do a real quick New York real Yankees quick. May recap. Shane, you got the link. I think you can see it there too. Um I overall, let's let's look at the month of May with let's just overall, 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 overall. It was just like a 50. It was like if you flipped a coin and heads was we win, tails was we lose, that's how May went for the Yankees. We started hot. Oh man, I didn't even realize how the month looked. Yeah. Did you have you seen did you see the outlook? I, I put a screenshot, but the, I also put I'm a looking link. at the screenshot. Yeah, it's it's yeah. like win streak, say, losing streak, yeah. win streak, say, losing streak. I'd say the highlight of the month was clearly Kluber's no hitter. Yeah. Like smack in the middle of a win streak, smack in the middle of a, a good series against Chicago. I was started off against the, the first month of the first couple of days of May. We finished off a series, swept Detroit as expected. We hit the 500 mark at 14 and 14. Chapman's looking hot. Offense is slowly coming back together. Houston comes to town, weird series. We uh, kind of fumble the last game, but whatever. We lose the first game to Washington. Went out the rest of the series. We've won three series straight, which in April was like never gonna oh happen. God. Oh my god! That would Tampa be comes to town. No, we go to Tampa after Washington. My fault. Win that series. We lose a heartbreaker in the last one. I think after that episode, you even said like we always got to lose the last one, and we kind of lose they, momentum. They, they look always forward. Do. Yeah. They once they know they can't lose the series, they don't yeah. care. They yeah. look to the next series. That's dumb. We're not it's, in first place. You can't do that. It's kind of ugly to look at too. Like that's part of the reason why, like this, 
you look at those win streaks and they're not like streaks at all. It's just like bunches of three, four wins and then a loss. And the loss is kind of ugly. Like if you look at the total run differential for the series, it's bad because of the loss. Mm-hmm. We go with the Baltimore after Tampa. Win the first two, lose a bad one for the last one. Yep. Every it's series. like, what, what, what do we do? Um, we go to Texas. Obviously, that's where Kluber gets his no hitter in game three. I take win that, that series. He, you take credit me. because it was the Garrett Cole perfect, perfect game, game Garrett Cole the night before that on your channel. <laughs> and somehow, some way, the Yankees just knew. They're they like, yeah, knew. today's we, game. We've got to pick up that momentum. And from this I threw Yankees the perfect fan. game to Jorge Posada. Yankee to Yankee. I, had it card. had to happen. And um, it was on the road. You knew it had to happen. Come on. This, this is where it got good is that we sweep Chicago. At the mid in the end of the, like the last oh, the third week of the month. best team in baseball. Oh, come on, nobody believes that. Everybody was saying, "Oh, because they're still the favorites to win the AL." I don't understand that. Not after that game. Not after that series. That's when I, I even team. told you. That's when name well, a good in team the AL, in the AL, bro. Boston. Uh, that's about it. Tampa's good. It's ba- No, it's fourteen. The A's are, are in the okay. AL. It's the A's Boston. Have picked up the pace. It's Boston, Tampa, Tampa, Chicago, and then if you want to say the Yankees just because of the firepower that could be there, and we're staying close. No let's, West let's finish, team. Scares let's finish me. the month of May. Well, that I, that's the other issue is that most of those AL, even, no AL West teams, are like decently non-factors. The A's are are the best team in that division, and it's only because dude, their run differential is like plus three. Yeah. Like, they don't win big games. They just, like, sneak They've them out. They've never done that, though. That's the no. only thing, yeah. Ever. Manea threw a, a – he had a good outing the other day. That was the one highlight I think I saw recently. I think – hold on. Back to that Chicago series where they saw Chicago. I sent you, like, an IG post or whatever of, I think, the BR Walkoff, Bleacher Reports baseball page. They had, like, a power rankings, and they had Chicago ranked, like, four or five. Did the Yankees at 10? And all the comments were just – when did you make this list? Like it was sent like an hour ago when I sent it yeah. to you an hour, an hour prior. And people were like, you have, you must've made this list like a month ago and just said, you know what? Push it because all the team, I mean, Boston was up there. Fine. Whatever. They were probably one of the best teams at that point. Uh, 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 Can you take them serious? I mean, it, it was then like the Dodgers, the Padres, it. the Giants, like, again, like, you know, a lot of those. No, I'm talking come Boston, in. like legit Boston. Can you take them serious? Because they have, the last time three of the they were hitters. good. The last time they were good, they cheated. In the AL. Cora's back. The team got worse. They got Cora Gardy, back. And all Gardy of a sudden, they're back in first place. Gardy said it, I think, today. You still hate those guys? I don't know. Of course we hate those guys. Of course we hate those guys. They hate us. They cheated us them. out of a World Series. After the Chicago Series, you had Toronto. That was ugly. I was at that first game. That was Tuesday, May 25th. They lost 6-2. Kluber was in that one. That was a game after no hitter, and he got hurt. That's the one he got Boyd hurt. got yeah. hurt. Um, Vladdy went yard. Guriel went yard. Um, a couple other guys. I don't, regardless, ugly game. Uh, rained out, double header. They split the double header. Last week of May, which is last week, swept by Detroit. Not two minutes ago, three minutes ago, did I just say. We swept Detroit. <laughs> I was like, look at the month. We started the month with the sweep of Detroit sweep and ended Detroit. the month with the lo- uh, getting swept getting by Detroit. Getting swept by Detroit. And then the last day of May Memorial Day, we lose an opener to the Rays. Uh, that was tie on. You know the difference, though? Looking pretty bad, I think, overall. What's, what's you the, know I'm what sorry. the difference? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. That first series against Detroit, all of their pitchers weren't confident. You had Tarek Skubal or whatever his name is throw a no hitter you had casey mize come off of six innings no runs uh who was Garrett the other Bulls, guy brother who who was the last guy uh spencer no spencer turnbull through the through the no hitter um Tar- yeah. Tarek Skubal, who has like an 18 era the game before that he threw like five innings of like of like one, two runs three runs and that gave him confidence so he came Skubal, out there of course turnbull, turnbull i tweeted it out Urania? so okay. many different times the Yankees yeah. right now are the – for the old guys, oh, my God, wow, I can still do this. Mm-hmm. And for the young guys, they're, oh, I think I actually am cut out to be in the majors. That's the Yankees lineup right now. Everybody they face 
that has over a five ERA career comes in and goes, man, I think I might need to retire or man, I don't think I could do this. And they come in and throw seven innings, one run. Yankees might win the game in the bullpen, but that starter. Yeah. Brian Yarbrough today. Yeah, I know. But he set a record today, no? CG. Yeah, it's like that was the first Rays CG in like five years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the nice CG Ryan Yarbrough throws 86 miles an hour. On top 86. of that, it was, it was cold day today, too. What it make but matters you understand. worse? Why is why was why was um, I understand why Giancarlo was sitting, but why was he sitting? Why was he sitting? Why was, was he hot the last couple of games? That's usually why they sit people. No, he with him, they the said injury. we want him to play every game in the Red Sox series, but it's like. We have an off day Monday and another off day on Thursday. So we're saving so him up. He's sitting for, for what? twice next week. Play him now. Play him yeah. in the next four games. He's not so playing today. Play today in the next three. And then you would have had Monday off and he played two games and he had another day off. They don't want to play five games in a row. He would only play four. No, he would have played six. But you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it, it's that's another confidence thing with, you know, coaching and stuff because I, I think Boone has – Kind of not giving anybody the green light in terms of their only defense. judge, judge and Gio. Judge, judge is playing every day. Geo is playing every day. That's a given. That's fine. And Gliber, of course, at shortstop. But but even Gliber doesn't play every day. The, they, the right side put, of the infield. They'd rather put Geo at short and put or Duhar at yeah around and, wherever. And Duhar is our left fielder. I'm sold now. He's not moving. Really. They'll rather he's coming put Clint a, at third base. He's, he's coming in every position. I, he might come in at catcher next game, and I won't even be surprised, bro. <laughs> I won't even be surprised. Like, if you look at it, if you really look, like, look very good. Yeah. Andy Let's, Hart um, looks oh, very good in left field. Other than his charging the ball, he's not very good at charging and throwing home. But he caught every fly ball, even though it might look like an adventure. He's better defensively in left field than Clint Frazier. Ask me how that's possible. I don't know. But he's better in left field than Clint Frazier. Clint Frazier in right field is a gold glover. But Clint, Clint, Clint Frazier in, in left field is horrendous. Andrew Hart goes out there and he's just, ah, ah, throw the ball in. Clint Frazier's like, oh. and then he finally catches and it's like, bro, what are you doing? Just catch the ball. I mean, for Andujar, it's it's basically third base, but more fly balls. More time, more time. Yeah, you get more time to the ball. <laughs> it's not the hot corner; it's like the exactly. semi-warm corner. Exactly. So that's I, the difference. I don't know. Uh, it's the journey with this Yankees. Why is this Why year. is Tyler Wade not playing? Rugnet or Doris batting one ninety. Tyler Wade. His, his career Ooh. average of the last three years is one ninety five. I mean, he's bad. Yeah. The Rangers are paying his entire salary for him to play for the Yankees. That Bad. means it won't hurt if you don't play him because you're not paying for him to play. Put him on the bench. Tyler Wade needs to play. You think he needs more at-bats? Tyler Wade has looked great in the month of May. April, he was the worst player in baseball. But May, Tyler Wade has been elite. Play I don't know if I've seen Tyler enough Wade, Wade but I, it, it doesn't move me. It doesn't move the needle at all. Odor, Odor is bad. The needle. I know. I'd rather Odor is bad. Tyler Wade, he's young. That's uh, that's that moves the needle. I'd rather have Lemayhew. Or the this. Last second. Or this. This don't is, even play at first base. I don't care at this point. This would kill me. Yeah. But I w- I would much rather see this. Clint in left, Andohar at third, or Andohar at first. Geo at short or third. Glaber at second or short and DJ at second or first. Maneuver that infield how you want. Put Clinton left, Judge in, in, in center. You like Judge in center the other And day. put Giancarlo in right field and have the DH be the revolving door because it makes literally zero sense that Giancarlo gets hurt standing still. I don't get it. Um, Let's talk Red Sox series just before we cap off the Yankees month. Uh, we got three games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All late games. Thank God. Could be on TV, all of them. Thank God. You know what that means? What that you know what that what means? Do you think that means? Sanchez 
give me Sanchez Sanchino. at all three games because Cole's Sanchino. not pitching. No, he's not pitching. Cole's not yeah. pitching, and and Kyle Higashioka has been horrendous. He's the last couple even weeks. today calling the game. No, 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 bad. It wasn't. No, him. it was It was no. pretty bad. It was. He set umpire. Cole up on. He, I mean, yes, yes, that was the because umpire. he was forcing Cole down the middle. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm Higashioka, I'm turning around, and I'm looking at the umpire and saying, "Before nah. my manager comes out here, <laughs> right in that, yeah, no, that's Aaron Boone's job, and he uh, did it, and it didn't yeah, work. He did his job. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work because Yarbrough yeah. was still getting all those calls in the ninth inning. It was pretty bad. I I don't know. Higashioka to me, like he's not swinging a bat now. That's for sure. And Gary, like, why not? Gary, Gary, why not? Do you know his numbers over the last like week and a half? Oh, it's been up. No, somebody did put his no, numbers. No, I did. Not I did up. take note of that. Elite. He's batting almost no, no, no. four hundred with the OPS, OPS almost twelve hundred. OPS is four hundred. I think. No, his OPS is over a thousand in his last eight last week and a half. Get the. I'm looking at Gary Sanchez stats right now because Gary Sanchez has been I want to see it to nutty believe it. over the last week. I mean, I would hope so because I absolutely love Gary Sanchez. I think he should be starting every game with Higgy giving him breathers. But clearly he's not built for it. Uh, no, no, on. he's built for it. It's just that last seven he days he's hitting worst. 389. His OPS last seven days is 1167. Well, I'll be. Well, uh, like, I mean, like, all the people on Twitter coming from from? for me, all the people on Twitter coming for me because I said the Yankees better not trade Sanchez because there's teams that would kill for him, but he's, you would still be selling low. I said, don't trade him. So this one guy was like, you're contradicting yourself. How could they be selling low? If so many teams would be killing for Gary Sanchez. I said, they're not mutually exclusive. If you look at it, you can have a bad Gary Sanchez and still have teams that are beasting to get Gary Sanchez production. Gary Sanchez at best is arguably the greatest hitting catcher we've ever seen. <laughs> and I'm, best, I'm laughing because it's true because we talked about this last week. At we, best, how many good catchers are there in the MLB? Zero. None. With the exception There's of Romuto and Gary. Buster Posey. And I don't know how if he you does count it. the full game of Yadier Molina. And Salvi. Salvi's up And if there. you count he, the full game Salvi. of Salvi, yeah. and one guy who kind of slipped under the radar radar is oh man, I forgot his name. As soon as I said it, I forgot his name. What team? What team? What team? What team? Oh my god. Won't say White Sox. No, White Sox is Yaga's money. He's the worst hitter in baseball this year. Don't it's, say it's, don't it's say his own base percentage is like four hundred, but he's batting like 067 on this. He's season. the guy who walks at every at bat. Yeah, he has two hits and walks every other bat. Yeah. Uh, God have well, mercy. I listen, just listen. About while, it earlier, while you remember the name, I think we should end at least with just some injury updates to the Yankees because Britain is throwing, Bluebird's throwing, and Voight. There's no word on him. His oblique is 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 going to keep him out for a couple more weeks. Is the last thing we heard about him on Sunday, Saturday, Sa- Sunday. Oh, Will Smith. Oh, from the, the Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, he's pretty good de- um, offensively this year. He's he's pretty good. Yeah. But everybody else? Mike no. Zanino? You think Zanino's better than no, Gary no, 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 Sanchez? No. no. You're absolutely right. Every team, with the exception of maybe Philly, the Royals, and the, and the Giants, need a catcher. Need Dodgers a Gary I'm Sanchez. Will Smith needs good. a Gary Sanchez. <laughs> no, Will Smith is needs a Gary Sanchez. Will Smith is he's hitting this year. That's fine. Fine. The Dodgers don't take him. The Dodgers don't need any more bats. Why would the Dodgers they have don't. the monopoly on bats right now? Why would they need another? Exactly. Bat? But you they understand bat the, the 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 bat boy, the ball boy. It doesn't matter. You the probably the, hit the a Indians have blast. probably the two best defensive catchers in baseball, but they both hit under two hundred. No, they want a Gary Sanchez. No, every team wants they, a Gary Sanchez. Every the Yankees catching tandem, including how bad Higgy's been, is like third in baseball in terms of, I think, either OPS or war, one of the two of them. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it, Gary Sanchez and Kyle Higashioka have been horrendous for most of the season. Gary Sanchez has been great recently. They're still the third best catcher in baseball combined. 
and we'll keep them. We will keep them. So all these people on Twitter talking about trade Gary Sanchez for a bag of chips. It doesn't matter. To do what? Start Higgy? So Higgy can strike out on three straight sliders right and down the middle. It doesn't then, even have to then, be in the dirt. Repeat the cycle. Right down the middle. The cycle. Trade Higgy. Trade Higgy. And then what? We'll you give Gary game. Sanchez that new that new lease on life. What is he going to do? He's going to hit 500 with 35 home runs. <laughs> Use wisdom. Don't you cannot trade Gary Sanchez because you're trading low. You're going to get two mid level prospects for Gary Sanchez right now. He's going to hit 40 home runs for that team that he goes to. We're going to be stuck with two mid level prospects that don't even see the big leagues. So we're back. We're back at square one. So yes. Yes, you can 100% sell low, and the person that you're selling low on can still be a hot commodity. Gary Sanchez That's is baseball. the fifth best catcher in baseball, so That's let's not baseball. do this. I mean, the yep. dude was coming for me. You're contradicting yourself. What? Why would you keep Sanchez? Who is going to replace him? Higgy? You think Higgy's better than Sanchez? Have you watched the games? Fastball's right down the middle. He's rolling over to third base. Sliders could be hanging sliders. He's missing them. Not even like popping them up. He's completely whiffing on them. Let's not do this. Let's not. No. You're not going to bring the, even, the, the, the Twitter it. fingers onto here. Keep them on, on Twitter. I don't even want to hear Just it. Tell that guy when, when he needs something to talk about, tell him to tag the main account. <laughs> right down there, which is right down there. He wants to talk about con- contradicting himself. Define oh my contradicting, God, my guy. I couldn't believe it. Define it. Define and then some it. other dude was like, the Yankees need to trade for Jesse Winker and then put him in. Jesse Winker, the I mean, listen, bugger on, I, the, I, on the Reds. I'm why? Because like, he's, oh, he has the highest batting average. But come on. I'm like, Jesse Winker, Winker is arguably a worse fielder than Clint. And you're going to put him for- in center? Thanks for the surface level facts and information just because no, you look at ESPN's name. stats. Well, okay, it's Jesse. He has one of the highest. No, I'm talking about the baseball. guy who tweeted that was a oh. legit Twitter oh. Yankees guy that people love. He's not oh, like Jesus, famous, man. but he's one of those guys that uh, yeah. makes some good takes. When he said that, I didn't even respond. Jesus, I said, man. who's going to play center? That's all I responded. I said, who plays center field? He responded two hours later and said, Winker. And I just closed that. I said, you want that bum? He's a great hitter, but you want, I'd rather put Giancarlo in center every single day than put Jesse Winker. Oh, there as Lord. Jesse Winker is the worst left fielder in baseball. He's worse than Clint. And you want to put him in center field? Come on now. You're not thinking this through. You're not thinking this through. <laughs> I literally just closed that. Thanks. I'm not even I'm telling you, he, he, he looked at the, the stat sheet on ESPN and said, oh, look, it's Jesse Winker at the top he of the list. Exactly. Offensive stat sheet. No, no. He, that's all. I, that's when it. you look at the ESPN stat sheet, that's the first thing they show you down the list. And yep. he said, wow, look, a big number. Let's trade for this guy. The Nothing only else. thing that makes sense if you trade for Jesse Winker is if you think Judge can play center field every single day, and the Yankees wouldn't dare. Uh, they won't because do he, every day he's going to play center field for us a good amount of times, but yeah. he's going to sit every time or he's going to DH the next day every single. He time. would he would need iron leg replacement. Exactly. If if they so wanted let's, him to let's play let's think this through, guys, Yankees fans. Yankees Twitter this week started turning into Yankees Facebook, and we can't have that. Yankees Twitter is supposed to be the smart people. Let's we can't have that. Let's be smart. Let's think this through before we start f- flying off the handle. Conscientious tweeting. That's what we're all about yeah, on Yankees yeah, yeah. Twitter. Yeah, let's call it. This is uh, D Rod and Shane Yank Sports Podcast, episode 20, the big 2 0. We'll have a fun one probably for you next time, but listen, there's too much good stuff going on. NBA playoffs are on. They're live right now. Nuggets, Blazers getting into the second quarter. Lakers, Suns later tonight. Obviously, we'll have more coverage for you guys and stuff you know, throughout the week. Follow the Twitter account. Start adding that Twitter account, especially with your bad takes, so we can dump them in the trash, <laughs> compost them, and put better tweets out. It's all about reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce, and reuse, then, um, recycle. Remember that? Disney Channel. The middle school. Oh, no, no, wait. Disney Channel. Uh, follow us on our personal Twitters. I'm at DannyRod75. Shane is at... That's A underscore Shane. And keep following us. We're on um, YouTube. Keep watching those videos. Get some of those views up. I know they're long, but you, you like long video every now and then. I know you'll be watching I'm going to try to do some snippets this week. Those, those those long, hour-long John Boy videos. Those long... Oh, God. The ones with 
Trevor Plouffe and I'm oh my god. <laughs> oh, Trevor Plouffe, yeah. 30 minutes. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, we're on Podbean, we're on Pandora Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, keep subbing, keep liking, keep sharing, and just keep tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.